Welcome to this video on Lumericals product licensing. In this video, we will show how extra engine licenses can be used on a remote cluster. Let's consider the following situation. We have a person with a desktop computer in their office, and they also have access to a large computer cluster. The local desktop computer will be used to run the graphical CAD and to run small simulations. The cluster will be used to run large volumes of simulations, such as parameter sweeps. This user has purchased one full license, which contains both a graphical CAD license and an engine license, and they have also purchased a 10-pack of engines. The full license is set up in the office, and the extra engines are set up on the cluster. It's important to notice that we have two separate license managers running, one in the office with the full license, and one on the cluster with the 10 pack of engines. Okay, let's look at a few key points, then I'll show a simple example. First, it's important to understand that the local computer, which has the graphical CAD license, is used to do all setup and analysis of the simulations. It's also used to run all script files. Next, the cluster, which only has engine licenses, is only used to run prepared simulation files. Next, the cluster is often located on a remote network, making it necessary for you to manually copy the files to and from the cluster. Similarly, it is usually necessary to start the simulations from a non-graphical terminal, since the cluster does not have a license for the graphical CAD. Of course, you could consider purchasing a full license for the cluster, but that's not the configuration we're looking at here. Finally, the precise workflow that you use to run simulations on the cluster will depend a lot on how it's configured. For example, how do you transfer files to the cluster? How do you run jobs? Maybe with a job scheduler, maybe not. Does it support graphical connections? And so on. The example I'll show here demonstrates the basic idea of setting up files on the local computer, transferring them to the cluster, running them, and then bringing them back for analysis, but the details will vary system to system. So let me pause the PowerPoint presentation and we'll switch over to my desktop computer here. And we'll say this is the desktop computer. You can see I'm running the graphical CAD and I could set up the simulation. I can run an individual simulation. Here it's running on the local computer. And when this is done, I can look at the results. For example, I can plot the reflection. I could also run script files if I was interested in doing so. But now suppose I want to run a parameter sweep. And this sweep has 20 files, so I want to use the cluster because it can get this done more quickly. Because the cluster is on a remote network, I can't simply launch it from this graphical CAD. Instead, I right click on the sweep, I click Save to Files, and this will create a subdirectory with all 20 files in it all 20 points of the sweep. If I look in this directory, I see all 20 files here. Next, I log in to my cluster. Uh, here I'm using PuTTY and I've uh, connected to a, a remote Linux computer. And the first step is to copy these files to my uh, cluster, to this Linux computer. So there, all 20 files are copied. Next, I'm going to run all 20 files. Now the details of how you would actually copy these files and the precise command you would use to start them running will vary cluster to cluster, but the basic idea of moving the files to the cluster and then submitting them to your scheduler or just launching them directly with the command prompt, that um, is something you'll have to do. So now we're just waiting for all 20 files to run. It's worth noting that I'm currently running one simulation at a time using only one engine license. 
to use all 10 engines, I'd need to set up a job scheduler capable of starting multiple jobs. Such systems are available on most large clusters. Okay, now that all 20 files have run, we can copy them back to the local computer. Notice that copying them back takes longer because now they have data in the files, so they're much larger. Okay, now we have all the files back on the local computer. I can right click on the sweep again and load from files. This will load all of the data from the individual files into the CAD so we can look at the results. Okay, for example, we now have all the data, we can visualize the reflection, and we can see the data from all 20 points in the sweep. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, the demo that I wanted to show. If we just switch back to PowerPoint for the last slide. Here are a few uh, relevant links from our knowledge base that provide a bit more information about installing on the cluster, the CAD and engine command line options and how to submit to job schedulers uh, and the example file that I've been showing here and, and more information about how to run these parameter sweeps without the graphical CAD. For further information on Lumerical's product licensing, see the other videos in this series. Thank you.